Well, greetings. Good to have you listening in today. Now, some of you are asking me, well, what happened last week? There was no video. Well, we'll call it technical difficulties. We did the tape, but somehow the, the video was in somebody's camera and the camera or the phone got wet. But anyway, we're here today and I'm glad we're here together. Now, I grew up in the 60s and uh, one of the most famous songwriters and artists of those days was Bob Dylan. Some of you will remember that and probably the song he's most well known for in those days, 1964, was The Times They Are A-Changing. The times they are changing, and if anybody lived back in that era, there was a lot of revolu going on in the world. But as I think of that song and also the words of it, that is just as true today as it was back then. Wouldn't you agree with me that the times they are changing? I mean, I'm 70 years young, and as I look over my going on seven decades now, I've never experienced, nor have you, anything like the coronavirus. I mean, it's wild what's going on. And we look at the news, upheavals are happening all over the world, in the political realm. It's just crazy, uh, the things that are going on. And things are changing at such an alarming rate, aren't they? You know, the values that we used to think were, were bedrock, those values also the, are, are changing in, in society. And things are just shifting and swirling all around. But I have good news for you. Hallelujah. Woo! And the good news is this, that in the midst of this ever-changing environment in which we find ourselves, it's good to remember that there's one thing that never changes, and that is Jesus Christ. In the midst of all the changes going on, there's one thing that never changes, and that's Jesus. And the scripture I want to mention to you, it's not in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, el mismo ayer, hoy, y por los siglos, para siempre. Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, and forever. Now, we don't have time to get into the Greek expounding on it, but when it says the same uh, yesterday, it means an eternity past. It means 2,000 years, 2 trillion years ago, uh, before time actually began, Jesus was there the same. And in eternity future, he doesn't change. And that is really, really good news for us. You know, some of you probably have heard me tell this story. But uh, years ago, uh, I went uh, spearfishing. I like to go spearfishing. I like to look for the fish. And I especially like to look for the lobster. Okay, we like those little things that have that. All right, absolutely. And so anyway, um, and boy, I was recently with my sister, Susie Seminole, and she had on my last night there, surf and turf. Oh! <laughs> All righty. So, but anyway, uh, we were about a mile offshore in about 50 feet of water, and there were two of us, and it wasn't Johnny Kayak, it was somebody else, so he gets off the hook. But anyway, the number one thing, when you're out that far, you go, you, you put the anchor down and you make it secure into, into a coral reef, into a rock. You make it very secure so that when you are, uh, you know, fishing and spear fishing and looking for lobster, that when you come back, the boat will be there, right? Yeah. You know, it doesn't take rocket science to figure that one out. Well, whoever it was, um, uh, you know, they, they put it in there, they thought it was secure, and then 40 minutes later or so, we go up top and we look for the boat and it's not there. Whoa, you know, this is a mile or a mile and a half offshore. You know, we have on these vest buoyancy compensators, you fill up with air, you, you bounce up and down, you go, oh, it's over there, you know, because the, the, so the wind was dragging it. So what happened was whoever put the anchor in, they didn't, it wasn't super secure. And so it was dragging along the ocean floor. And so, because I was the better swimmer of the two, we took, I took off my vest and then did my swimming thing, water boy thing, you know, went to the boat and thankfully, you know, everything was fine and we learned a lesson uh, from that. The title of what I'm sharing today is this, Anchor Into the Rock. Anchor Into the Rock. And the scripture says that Jesus is that rock. He's the one unchanging thing that as we go through life, we can rankle, rankle, we can anchor into. And he's the one person, the one person that we can depend on to be saying, 
the same. You know, some people are like rocks, but over time they'll change, they'll get older and this or that. But listen, Jesus is the one. And with all the sweeping changes that are happening in the world right now, I thank God. Don't we thank God that Jesus isn't the one of them that changes? Things are changing so quick. But the one thing in life that doesn't change is the rock. So my challenge to each one of us is that we will anchor into the rock. Now, let me give you a, a good piece of advice. And it's this. Dig deep into the Bible, especially the four Gospels. Because in the four Gospels, Jesus is very vividly portrayed there. And the Jesus that you and I find in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, listen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, remember? So when we look at Jesus in the Gospels, the things that he was saying back then, they are as true and as relevant today. Remember Peter one day, he said, Lord, where else can we go? You alone have the words of life. And so I encourage you, you know, to dig into the Gospels. It's a, I do that every day. For example, I love always, and I probably read through the Gospel three times a year, maybe four. I always love it when I get to Matthew chapter 8, because I know this is the story of Jesus and the leper. And so the leper comes to Jesus, and in those days, the, the lepers are supposed to keep their distance. So just the fact that he's getting close to Jesus, it, it's, let me put it this way, it was not politically collect, correct. <laughs> it wasn't socially correct. And then Jesus did the thing that probably his disciples were thinking, no, 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 no. But the, the, the leper said, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. And Jesus did the unthinkable. He reached out and he touched the leper, touched the unclean man, and he was made whole. And Jesus said he is willing. I love that because it tells me that Jesus was willing to meet that man at his point of need. Dear one, whatever point of need you have, Jesus is willing to meet you at that point of need. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe it's emotional hurt. Maybe it's financial need. Uh, whatever it may be, tell you what, he is the willing one. You know, also in that in that same chapter, actually, and in different, and also in Mark and and Luke and John, there's the story where Jesus had told the guys, get in the boat, go to the other side, and Jesus went up to the mountain and prayed. And so it's the middle of the night, and some of these guys are are established fishermen. You know, they're they're water worthy. Well, they're out there on the sea, and the storm kicks up, and they are freaking out. And they especially freak out when they see somebody walking on the water. And at first they think it's a ghost. They go, ah! But Jesus said this, be of good cheer, be of peace, it's me. Listen, I don't know the storms that you may be facing or you will face, but listen, that Jesus back then who said to them, be of good cheer, it's me. That Jesus who said, peace, he is the same today. This is why we want to anchor in to Jesus. And in this crazy world of change and coronavirus and all the upheaval and all the attacks and violence going on, the one steady thing we can depend on is the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. I love the invitation uh, that Jesus gives us at the end of Matthew 11. How many of you sometimes are just, uh, you know, you're tired, you're burnt out, you're exhausted. Jesus says this, come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and I will give you rest. Oh, what a beautiful word. What a beautiful promise, dear one. And here's the point I'm trying to make. Jesus is the same today when he said those words that he will be next week and the following week. He's the same. So when you're tired and you just, just come to Jesus, just whisper his name. Jesus, I can't take it. Jesus, you know, and he will meet you at that point of need. Uh, that point of need. Another example, uh, as I read the Gospels, there was one time when the disciples said, oh, no way. And Jesus says, that's correct. He says, with men, this is impossible, impossible. But he said, with God, all things are possible. So there may be some mountains, some situations in your life, my friend, that are just flat out. You look at them and you label them impossible. But with you, it's impossible. But what I want to tell you, with God, all things are possible. Amen. And this, you see, the one who said that 
2,000 years ago. He's the same exactly today. And his words have the same power today as we embrace his words and we engage him in faith. You know, another uh, teaching he gave us, one of his seven I am statements in John chapter 8, verse 12, he said, Yo soy la luz del mundo. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. He didn't say he who follows the, the pastor or the priest or the ministry leader or the church. And, you know, there's a place for that stuff. He says, no, ultimately, he says, I am the light of the world. And you know, sometimes life gets dark and, and cloudy and there's storms. But I want to just say to you, the same Jesus, he's the same today. And his words are true. And, and when you're going through dark times, just say, Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus, I need to follow you. Amen. Amen. Now, what is my bottom line on all of this? My bottom line on this message, Anchor into the Rock, is this is that let Jesus ever remain the central part of your Christianity, the central figure. You know, if we take Christ out of Christianity, we are left with the word inanity, which can lead to insanity. You know, sometimes probably well-meaning people, they add stuff to Christianity or they, they do weird stuff, it can get weird. But the, the message is this, Keep Jesus the center of your Christianity. Keep Jesus uh, the center of your life, and you will never go far wrong. Remember, anchor into the rock. So let me end by giving two applications. The first application is this. If you have never personally anchored into Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, come into my heart. I need you. I'm grateful for my upbringing. I went to church for 21 years. And I heard about God and about Jesus, but I really didn't know him personally. And so at age 21, when I said, Lord, if you're real, please save me. Please born me again. Whatever that means, Lord, come into my heart. That was when I first anchored in to the Lord Jesus. And if you haven't done that, you can just say, Lord, I need you. Please come into my life and my heart. And the second thing I want to say um, is to, to those who already are initially anchored into the Lord, sometimes we need to re-anchor ourselves into the Lord. And I have a personal word from the Lord to you. And this has helped me so very much. It's from my journaling uh, that the Lord spoke to me. But this is from the heart of God to you. It says, when you simplify and reduce life to wholehearted devotion to me, then you will experience life in its fullness. When you approach life in this way, with me as your focal point, you will be amazed at what I will do in you and through you. And when you lose focus, what I mean by that is when we get unanchored and we get sort of drifting, he says, and when you lose focus, simply come back to me. And in a quality way, get your eyes and attention back on me. You have yet to experience the fullness of grace that is available to you. At each moment, avail yourself of the fountain of grace, and you will be strengthened beyond your wildest imagination. And lastly, simply remember to keep me as your focal point. Let life be reduced to that. Dear ones, anchor into Jesus, the rock, and stay anchored in. I want to pray for you. Father, I bless this man, this woman, this precious person. Lord, who's listening right now, Father God. And Lord, I speak that apostolic blessing over them of the Apostle John. Lord, that they may prosper, that they may be shalom, that they may do well in every area of their life, O oh Lord God. And Lord, that they may be in health, God. Physical health, spiritual health, emotional health, mental health. Lord Jesus, I speak blessing and favor over them. And Lord, may they prosper in all things, even as their soul prospers, Father God. I entrust this precious person, this precious treasure to your care. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. Thank you.